We see that Kant's approach to moral theory, the basis of his moral theory, is really a completely different approach from the kind of approach that utilitarianism and other consequentialists, consequentialist theories, moral theories, take. And his theory is called a deontological approach. And we always contrast it with what we call teleological approach, but let's just explain what we mean by these terms. The word deontological approach, or word deontology, comes from uh, the Greek word, for the Greek words deon and logos, deontology, the study of duty, the study of moral obligations, that is, you have these obligations. Now, by contrast, a teleological approach, and teleological comes from a Greek word telos, which means goal or objective, but according to teleological theories like utilitarianism, act utilitarianism, which says that the that a right act brings about the best overall pain and pleasure of the alternative. That's what the utilitarian criterion, or the act utilitarian cri- criterion of morality does, Mill's um, criterion of morality. So what's important then for the morality of an action is, you know, what actually happens as a consequence. And sometimes people says, say that a, de- a teleological approach is one in which the ends, that is what results from the action, the ends justify what you're doing. So the action is right if it has good ends. Now by contrast, deontological theories are not goal-oriented in this way. It doesn't depend on the outcome. In fact, Kant likes that about the theory because he thinks there's a problem with all teleological theories. And we'll get to that when we get to Kant. But rightness and wrongness, according to a deontological theory of an act, depends on features of the act itself, not what it causes. That is, and the feature that we're going to see that's really important for Kant is that the action has to be consistent with one's moral duties one's moral obligation, not explained in terms of what results from the act. You know? And the interesting thing is people's moral duties are things that are expressed in terms of moral rules or what is sometimes called moral imperatives. And we'll come back when we talk to Kant and we'll look at this notion of imperative or commandment that we'll be talking about. Now, for an example of a deontological theory other than Kant's, there's one that's really very familiar to people. Many people, when they were little children, when they were first having uh, moral rules instilled in them by their parents, and they said, why shouldn't I do this, Y, and Z? They're given what we call the golden rule. That is, sometimes phrased as, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And this is a deontological moral theory that's used to inculcate moral values, to instill moral values in children. But this is could be summarized as the following in the following criterion of morality, a fundamental principle of our that is an act is morally right if and only if, in performing it, the agent refrains from treating others in ways in which he would not want others to treat him. This is a deontological moral theory. What makes the action right is a property, a characteristic of the action itself. That is, what happens when you're performing the action. So that's really the idea of a deontological theory. So we see that the theories that we've considered in this course, or that we're considering in this course, are two that are really diametrically opposed, the 180 degree opposites on the opposite side of the spectrum. Act utilitarianism on the teleological side, that the ends are important. Kant's theory, Kant's moral theory, on the other side, that it's the act itself, and there's something about the act itself that excuse me, makes it 